Hi friends, it's Miss Hannah here, and today we are going to read The Real Princess, a math magical tale. I see the word math in there. I wonder if we're going to be counting. Let's see. Long ago and far away, there was a king and queen and they had three sons. The eldest was called Primo and the second son was called Secudo. The third was Terzo. The king and queen had one butler, two footmen, three maids, four horses, five grooms, six dogs, seven gardeners, eight chimney sweeps, nine cooks, and ten soldiers. That is a lot of people. Now the king had a counting house in which he kept three bags of gold. Each bag contained 180 gold coins. That is a lot of gold coins. One day, my sons will marry, the king said to himself. These bags of gold will help them start their life. Now, it was custom at the time that the eldest prince should marry first, but only if he could find the right princess. So, Primo, the first son, set off to find a wife. He searched far and wide, but found a fault in every princess. Her nose is too pointy, and her she's much too bossy to be a real princess. So the eldest son is having trouble finding a princess. Primo returned home full of gloom. I wish so much to marry a real princess, mother, he sighed. But how can I tell if she's real or not? Leave it to me, said the queen. Now you may like to know what no one else in the castle knew. The queen, too, had a counting house. It was small shabby shed hidden far away. There she kept nine golden peas. When the queen opened the door of the shed, the peas gleamed in the darkness. The next day a terrible storm came. It was so wet and wild that the ten soldiers and seven gardeners had to abandon their duties. Abandon means leave. Then, just as the storm was at its worst, Terzo heard a knock, 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 knock on the castle door. Standing outside was a young girl. She was in a sorry state. The rain had drenched her clothing right through, and her hair fell dripping wet. Hmm... That evening, the young visitor washed and dressed and sat down for dinner with the king and queen and three sons. Who are you? asked Primo. My name is Numerica, Princess Numerica. The queen studied her through her narrowed eyes. Then, while everyone else drank their lobster soup made by nine palace cooks, she slipped away to prepare a bed. She asked her three maids to bring up six mattresses and seven feather beds from the linen room. When the bed was ready, the queen tucked five golden peas under the mattress. Hmm. The next morning at breakfast, the queen said to the girl, How did you sleep, my dear? Oh, wonderfully, thank you. The queen shook her head slowly. Then she went to the bedroom and threw the five peas out the window. But Terza was delighted. She is princess enough for me, he said. I love her just the way she is. So the king took Terzo to his counting house and gave him one bag of gold coins. Now, when the king went to his counting house, he counted only two bags of gold. And when the queen went to her counting house, she counted only four peas. One day, a dense, damp fog came down over the kingdom. The castle was hidden in a swirling dark mist, and the path seemed to merge into the bushes. Just when the fog was at its thickest, there was a loud knocking. Knock, knock, knock on the castle door. This time, Sakuda went to open it. Standing outside was a young girl. She was in a sorry state. Her dress had been torn to shreds by brambles. Her arms were cut. Sakuda felt his heart turn in a somersault. Hmm... I think he likes this princess. That evening, the young visitor washed and dressed and tended to her cuts and bruises. Then she sat down. Who are you? asked Primo. I am Princess Calcula, replied the girl in a rather grand voice. 
My parents live in the palace that is twice the size, and they have three times as many servants. The queen looked at her guests carefully. She thought they might have at last found a real princess for the for the girl had been brave about her injuries. Well, Princess Calcula told everyone about her family's servants. The queen slipped away to prepare a bed. This time, her three maids brought up eight mattresses, nine feather beds from the linen, and the queen tucked three golden peas in between the mattresses. Hmm. The next morning at breakfast, the queen asked, How did you sleep? Oh, wonderfully, thank you, her guest replied. I did not wake until I heard the crow. The queen shook her head slowly, and she went to the bedroom and threw out three peas. But Sakuto was delighted. She is princess enough for me, he said. I love her just the way she is. So the king took Sakuto to his counting house and gave one of the two remaining bags of gold. The young prince and princess, who were not quite a real princess, but nearly a real princess, married and lived happily ever after. Now when the king went to his counting house, he had only one bag of gold. And when the queen went to her counting house, she had only one golden pea left. Primo was riding back to the castle after another failed journey to find a real princess, when he heard someone singing. There, sitting in the shade of a tall oak tree, was a girl. She was we weaving flowers into garland for her hair. She smiled at the prince and wished him a safe journey. But Primo had no intention of going to his, going a step further. He quickly dismounted to tied up and tied up his horse. Who are you? He asked. Hmm. Let me see. Today my name is Geometra. Ah, uh, what's yours? She said. Primo, Prince Primo, as a matter of fact. Are you a princess by any chance? The girl raised her left eyebrow and looked at him straight in the eye. You'll have to judge that for yourself, she said. Why don't you stop asking questions and come explore? So the two of them wandered into the woods, watching the doves and butterflies go by. When the evening fell, they rode back to the castle together. That night, the young visitor washed and dressed and sat down for dinner. Thank you so much for inviting me to stay, she said. I hope you will all come and visit my family one day soon. The queen smiled as she listened. She only wanted the best for her son, and their visitor was enchanting. But was she a princess? Well, the rest of the party ate their ice cream sundaes, which had created, been created by a secret recipe. The nine palace cooks and the queen slipped away to prepare the bed. This time, her three maids brought up nine mattresses and ten feather beds from the linen room. And this time, the queen tucked just one golden pea between the mattress. The next morning, the queen asked, how did you sleep? Oh, I'm sorry to complain when you have been so kind. But although I had nine mattresses and ten feather beds, I felt the most uncomfortable. And I'm black and blue all over. The queen looked at her eldest son. Then she must indeed be a real princess, for only a real princess would feel just one golden pea through the nine mattresses and ten feather beds. She went to the bedroom and threw the pea out the window. So the king took his eldest son to his counting house and gave him the last bag of gold, and the queen went to her counting house, but of course she had no peas left, for though she had once had nine peas she used five for the first girl three for the second and one for the third and each time she had flung them out the window the prince and princess who were who was truly a real princess would one day become a queen they married and lived happily ever after the end almost but not quite Actually, that is not quite the end of the story, for now the king had no money left in his counting house. He had been given he had given it to all his sons. That night he asked the queen, How shall we manage? We have so many faithful servants who look after us. How shall we feed and pay them? Come with me, said the queen. So the king followed the queen into the garden. There, beneath the bedroom window, 
nine golden peas had taken root and grown into nine tall plants. This is from the pea that Princess Geometra slept on. The young woman is worth her weight in gold, mark my words. She picked a pod and inside glowed nine golden peas. She picked another pod and found nine more. Then she picked seven more pods and handed them to the king. My dear, she said softly, I think we have quite enough for our needs. The king was astonished and flabbergasted and speechless with delight. He hugged the queen and danced her all around the castle. And one butler, two footmen, three maids, four horses, five grooms, six dogs, seven gardeners, eight chimney sweeps, nine cooks, and ten soldiers all joined in the dancing. That is the real end. So they got to marry off their sons. Their sons found real princesses. And thanks for counting with us.